Hello and welcome in once again to the Red Zone. I'm your host, Alex Campbell, and the Cardinals football team has done it. A perfect 10-0 regular season and a CCIW championship secured on Saturday with a record-breaking offensive display in an 84-6 victory over North Park. I'll speak as I do every week with head coach Jeff Thorne on the significance of his team's accomplishment and their preparations for the playoffs. Plus, running back Ethan Greenfield and linebacker Ben Wong are back on the show to talk about senior day and this incredible season. Also, on this week's Cardinal Corner, we get to know the Cardinals bowling team a little better, one of the newest varsity programs at North Central. But first, while we don't have time for all 12 touchdowns, here's a look at some of the highlights from the Cardinals' 10th win of the year. Senior day at Benedetti Worley Stadium, the North Central football team honoring its graduating members, as well as having a moment of silence in honor of Martin Evan Lindbergh, who passed away earlier this year. The Cardinals squaring off against North Park, looking for a win that would seal their first outright CCIW title in five years. Just like last week against Wash U, the Cardinals set the tone with running back Ethan Greenfield here gashing the Vikings defense for a 52-yard gain. A few plays later, he finished off the drive with his five-yard run to begin what would be a historic day for both him and the entire offense. He made it two touchdowns and two drives on his way to 186 rushing yards and setting a new North Central career record, 4,027 yards on the ground. Next Cardinals drive, it was time to give Terrence Hill a turn. This 14-yard score made it 21 to nothing and was made possible by the great blocking of Sam Pryor and Michael Hassenstab. After another Vikings punt, we got the craziest play of the day. D'Angelo Hardy takes the handoff on the reverse and after looking like he was going to lose yardage, somehow keeps breaking tackles and eventually winds his way to the end zone. A 17-yard run on which he might have run 40 yards. Speaking of Hardy, for the fourth week in a row, he caught a touchdown pass from Luke Lane in of over 40 yards, making it 35 to nothing early in the second. Not only did Greenfield set a personal record, the Cardinals set a new CCIW record for offense in a game with 726 total yards. This third Greenfield touchdown run, another big chunk of it. The Vikings had only one first down in the entire first half, so the Cardinals offense just kept going, Hill on this carry dragging the entire North Park defense inside the five yard line. The Cardinals did occasionally throw the ball, including this touchdown pass from Lane into Andrew Kaminsky, his 10th receiving TD of the season. Terrence Hill had three touchdowns of his own. The Cardinals pulled all their starters at halftime after leading 63 to zero at the break, and they are CCIW solo champions and moving on to the playoffs one step closer to defending their national title. Final score, North Central 84, North Park 6. The Cardinals, in addition to completing a 10-win regular season with a conference championship, this week received a slew of individual awards, one of which was Cardinals head coach Jeff Thorne being named CCIW Coach of the Year for the second time. And as always, he joins me here on the Red Zone. Coach Thorne, congrats on everything your team accomplished on Saturday and has been rewarded with in the last few days. Thanks, Alex. It's, it's been a, an exciting few days, for sure. So, you know, 10-win season, CCIW championship outright, 17 all-conference selections. When you look at just kind of all this in some total, what, what does this year and what's been accomplished so far mean to you? I, it's, it's really it's special just, just because, you know, you had so many of these guys decide to come back for this extra year and for it to work out the way it has so far. Um, just really, really pleased and happy for our seniors, happy for all those guys that, that pressed the pause button on their lives, and it's, it's, it's been made worth it. Obviously, we've talked about, you know, you guys have had some phenomenal scoreboards. Mm -hmm. There's been some great individual performances highlighted by those 17 all-conference selections, but if you had to kind of pick one or two things about this team that has really made you proud this year, what to you, if anything, sticks out? I just think their, their, their resolve, their mental toughness, you know, our, our three core values are we're generous, we're resolute, and we're disciplined. And those guys are, are walking billboards uh, for what we stand for as a program. And they've demonstrated it all season long in how they've played, how they've prepared, 
uh, how they've treated each other and really brought our young players along as well. So just really proud of who, who these guys are and how they represent North Central College and our football program. By scoring 84 points on the weekend, you just edged it, got into the top spot in the country for D3 in yeah. scoring offense with a record-setting day in terms of yardage total, almost 600 rushing yards on the day. Mm -hmm. Just an incredibly impressive display, but particularly the running back group, all of them, and the offensive line really on show this week. Yeah, our offensive line played fantastic, and our running backs ran hard. And you know, at, at halftime, our starters were done, and uh, we played the played the game without Charmore. So just really proud of the depth that we've been able to develop over the course of the year. And uh, you know, when when you get the sizable margins, we we make it a point to get our second group in, our third group in, and get them reps, and it serves us well and will serve us well into the future because these guys are getting live game reps, mm -hmm. and, and many of many times as as much as two quarters worth. So. Really proud of the depth and uh, number of guys who showed up ready to play and carried out their responsibilities. Not a flashy day for the defense, obviously mm -hmm. a very good day for the defense, full of three and outs. But when you look at the season as a whole, 107 points allowed over the yeah. course of 10 games. Obviously, the offensive numbers are eye-popping. We've talked about that. But it's another moment to kind of take stock that the defense really does deserve the same amount of praise for the season they put together. Oh, there's no question. I, I was going through national statistics today. And I think our defense is 10th, 11th, or 12th in total defense, and we're, we're pretty high in scoring defense as well. But I'm, I'm pretty certain we're the only defense that has faced two offenses that are in the nation's top 10. Mm -hmm. In Wheaton College averaging 49 points a game and Aurora averaging, you know, in the, in the mid-40s. So, and we held both of those teams to seven points. So our defense has been dynamite this year. Uh, it's, it's a huge part of why we're sitting where we are right now. And, you know, looking forward to a great weekend this weekend. Before the game, senior day, obviously this isn't goodbye for real. Hopefully yeah. there's a lot more football to be played, but those moments where you get to greet the players and their families and just have those, you know, it's just a few seconds per player, but mm -hmm. what, what was that experience like for you and what are those interactions like for you as a coach who's gotten to know these players so well? Yeah, senior day is always special for me and I think uh, our other coaches as well. I get a chance to be on the field and greet the families and the players um, through that, that ceremony and it's, it's an emotional day, uh, I can tell you that. These guys have invested so much into uh, North Central College football, and, and, and we have spent so much time together. It's always a great opportunity to really recognize what they've done, and then obviously with the tribute we had to, to Marty, um, it made it extra special this year and, and just a, an extremely emotional day. I was going to ask you about that specifically, that moment of silence for Martin Evan Lindbergh, who passed away earlier this year. Mm -hmm. uh, a very emotional moment. You know, what did he mean to this program, and how do you hope the team can honor his memory? You know, I think what he means to our program and what he, what he meant to our program was just he, he was a great ambassador for what you can do with your life when circumstances aren't exactly as you would have wanted them or hoped that they would be. Mm -hmm. You know, rather than taking a, a really negative situation in his life with a season or career-ending injury, he spun it into a positive and was just an awesome, awesome member of our staff as a filmer, as a manager. Uh, we just really relied heavily on him, and uh, we've, we've dedicated an office to him, and it'll always be the Evan Martin Lindborg Memorial Football Operations Office from this point forward. Uh, so we'll never forget Marty. Uh, our players loved him, and that's the saddest part of it. He didn't know. You know, he just didn't realize how much he was loved. And I think we all need to do uh, a better job or be aware as human beings uh, that people are going through stuff that we may not know about. And if we choose to just always treat each other with kindness and assume the person you're dealing with is having a bad day, then I think it might be a better place for all of us. Absolutely. And then finally, we look ahead to this weekend. Carnegie Mellon, an opponent North Central has never faced. Mm -hmm. uh, they're on a seven-game winning streak. They've got by scoring defense, a top 10 defense in the country. What are you kind of expecting this weekend? We're excited. I think that's one of the things that I love so much about the playoffs is you get opportunities to play teams that, you know, aren't in your conference and you're playing year in and year out. Uh, East Coast team, uh, Carnegie Mellon's one of the top schools in the country, especially on the business side. So we know we're gonna see some kids that are gonna be disciplined, they're gonna, they're gonna carry out their assignment. And uh, defensively, they're fantastic. They really are, they run well. They've got a scheme that moves people around. So. Um, you know, we're going we're gonna to have to play well. Quarterback's going to have to be on point. And defensively, uh, just keep doing what we've been doing.
It is time to check the tape with Cardinals head coach Jeff Thorne. And coach, what we are checking this week is the running game. This first play we're going to look at, one of several touchdowns for Terrence Hill, and in particular the blocking of Sam Pryor and Michael Hassenstab on this play. Really jump right off the screen. Yeah, uh, we love to get our guards out and running. Uh, both these guys, guys did a great job in Mike's case. Uh, that's, that's a lineman's dream right there, to be able to, to finish and land on top of a defender. Uh, so great, great way to give Terrence an opportunity to kind of walk into the end zone there. Good job by Sam and, and Mike. Ethan Greenfield, of course, set the all-time uh, North Central record for rushing in this game. And what I think is crazy, and I still never get tired of watching it throughout the season, you can physically right here see him change gears and just find another speed. Yeah, Ethan's special. He's, uh, the jump cut is, is, I think, to me, the most impressive part of that run, and he's shown that over the course of his entire career here. Uh, what Ethan's added to his repertoire just over the last two years is the ability. He's always been able to break tackles, but it's just at another level these last two years. He's so strong from the waist down, uh, works incredibly hard in the weight room, one of our strongest players pound for pound. Uh, so, you know, we're just we're blessed to have somebody like him. And then you, you, you bring Terrence Hill in after Ethan Greenfield. I mean, <laughs> we're, we're kind of blessed with with running back riches, to say the least. Well, on that note, we're going to take one more look at Terrence Hill. And mm -hmm. in a game that is well in hand at this point, he hits the line of scrimmage on this play. Yeah. And I think he drags five or six players an additional 10 yards. What does this kind of effort you know, show? This feels like Terrence in a nutshell, this play. Yeah, you know, it was really good to see him kind of lower his shoulders and, and run hard like that. Um, he, he's such a good running back. I mean, he would start for every other team in our conference mm -hmm. and, and probably be an all-conference player. That's the level of player that Terrence is, uh, you'd never know it talking to him. He's, he's the best teammate that you could ever imagine. We, you know, we had a, one of our Cardinal manual meetings yesterday. Our, our topic was love and, you know, we were asking who, who's a great demonstration and his name came up in my room alone and we're in three different rooms three different times. Guys mentioned Terrence Hill and, and what he's been through in his life to be that example and to have that kind of a, a, a perception from his teammates just speaks to the caliber of human being that Terrence Hill is. Well, Coach, it is that second season time of year. It's going to be exciting to watch at Benedetti Worley Stadium this weekend. Best of luck, and thanks as always for coming on the Red Zone. Thanks, Alex. Opportunity is everywhere. It is in everything and within everyone. Your opportunity is at the center of all that we do so that you can exceed your personal best. Welcome back to the Red Zone. As the regular season ends and the playoffs begin, it felt right to bring back two of the leaders of this Cardinal football team to the show, two first team all CCIW inclusions as well. Ethan Greenfield, Ben Wong, thanks for coming back on the Red Zone, guys. Thanks, thanks, for, having thanks for having us. Yeah. So before the game, you know, being on the sidelines for senior day, having that moment to, you know, be with your parents, go on the field, you know, Coach Thorne greeting you guys. What is that whole experience like to go through? I know it's not final goodbye, as I said to Coach, but, you know, just kind of what's senior day like for you guys? For me personally, I was telling everybody to just stop talking about it because I didn't want to, I want to focus on the game, then we can figure all that stuff afterwards. But, uh, no, it, I mean, it was great just to kind of have that embrace with my parents and with Coach and just see everybody kind of celebrated for all the work we put in over the years. Yeah, I think that uh, it's kind of an important moment. It's kind of a good, a good reminder to sit, take a step back and just kind of look at everything you've done and you've accomplished and the people who are there for you and really appreciate it. So I think that's a really good time for that. And that kind of is what my mind was going through with my family members there and seeing uh, my teammates like Ben be able to have this moment for him and uh, everyone in his class. So I think it was a good time to just remember um, a lot of those moments and how important and everything that has been going on for us. Several times this season, Coach Thorne has said that, you know, at least in our discussions, he's talked about how important the relationships of this team are, how individual relationships are kind of the building blocks, the foundation of what makes this team special. How have the two of you seen that play out, you know, in the locker room on the field over the course of your time as a Cardinal? I mean, for me personally, it's just everybody is friends with everybody. There's no cliques on the team. I know that's kind of a cliche answer that a lot of people give, but it's kind of hard to describe unless you're in the locker room experiencing it. Just everybody 
together we're all messing with each other. There's no different pods in the locker room. Everybody is going to different parts of the locker room to talk to different guys, and everybody's kind of known for something, but everybody's got their thing that just kind of makes them and, and what they bring to the team and kind of makes them unique. Yeah, I mean, kind of what Ben brought up, it's hard to really describe. It's kind of something you feel and you, uh, you witness every day because, I mean, we're, we're an extremely competitive group and it gets really intense on the field, but once we're off the field in the locker room, it's like none of that happened and we're all super close and like really good friends again. And it really does like the relationships we have with each other. And it's not just like, I'm only have a good relationship with dudes in my class. I'm like good friends with kids who are freshmen, the dudes who are fifth year seniors, the sophomores, the juniors, like everybody has a relationship with everybody. This was of course, not only senior day, it was a day to celebrate an outright CCIW title. You guys personally and several of your teammates getting you know individual accolades. I know this championship is just one step to the eventual goal of a national title defense, but what does this specific accomplishment mean for each of you guys? Something we haven't done before. Uh, my last ride and, and the first time we get to do that. Um, so that's a great accomplishment, but like you said, it's just a stepping stone towards the bigger goal of winning a national championship. So winning it outright and, and going undefeated just gives us the opportunity to you know, put ourselves in the best possible position in the playoffs too. Yeah, I think the last, like my, the last time we won conference, we were co-champions for me. I was a freshman in 2018 and kind of doing that because it, it, it still means something and it's something that's still important. But it's, again, it's like what we said, what Ben said, what you said, it's not the end goal. It's not what we're working for. It's just a stepping stone along the way. Ethan, on Saturday, we talked about this in the post game, but you went over 4,000 career yards rushing. It's a new individual record for a career at North Central. Having had a couple of days to reflect on that accomplishment, you know, what have been your thoughts about, you know, that milestone that you reached this weekend? I owe a lot of guys up front a lot of thank yous and <laughs> a lot of tight ends and everyone who's ever blocked for me. That's and, and the receivers too, everyone who puts in that work because it's a it's a unit thing and it's I don't I don't like how it is just like kind of my name up there because realistically it's not. It's so many other guys who had so many important roles in that, and so I do my best in telling them and making sure that they know that it's because of them and they're, and I'm forever grateful for them. And then Ben, your fifth year here, a captain on the defense. Over these 10 games, what has you know, set this team apart in your mind and how have you seen this group grow through this regular season? I think, speaking from a defensive perspective, just the maturity. Uh, everybody has starting experience, everybody's out there. Something I think of is, is we take pride in, in scouting our, the other team, our opponent. And in the past, you know, if we could call out a play here or there, that was really cool. But this year, everybody is, is knowing the formations, the heavy tendencies, whether it's going to be run or pass, what specific play it might be if they have a heavy tendency. So just the maturity and knowing that we're not going to have any misassignments because it's a veteran group, but also that we're going to know our opponents like the back of our hands. So just that a, a new level of trust between me and my other defensive teammates. And then, you know, this weekend you talked about scouting the opponent. Carnegie Mellon, a team that the Cardinals have never played before ever, and there are over 100 years of football history. How does that factor in a team you know nothing about in your preparations? And how do you draw on the experiences of 2019 as you go back into a postseason? I think it's exciting. I mean, playing a new team from a new conference on the East Coast, we've never seen them know. Um, we had no teams that we both played before this year, so it's kind of like it's very interesting to watch the film with a critical eye and get ready, and it gives a little more excitement and energy to it, and uh, I can't wait for the opportunity. Yeah, Ethan touched on the biggest thing. It's, it's exciting, but uh, just watching their tape, they run a completely different offense than anything we've seen so far this year. But that's exciting because that gives us an opportunity to kind of expand our arsenal of what we can defend or what we've seen and have experience with. Well, before I get you out of here, as we always finish on the show, we're going to do some quick hits. You guys know how this works. And the first question this week, we saw our first snowfall of the year over the last week. In general, what are your thoughts on snow? Are you snow people? Are you outdoorsy people in the winter? Just general opinions. Uh, I don't have a problem with snow. I have a problem when it's like really, really cold. Like if it's like, if, it's a, if there's snow and it's not bad, I'm okay. But if it's like super windy and it's like below like 15, below like somewhere like that, then I'm not, I'm not a fan. It's gotta be, it's gotta be all in it. I hate the <laughs> half inch of snow. If, I like snow when it's, it's enough that, you know, as a kid you can go out and make snow angels, snow forts, that sort of stuff. So um, if it's gonna snow, it better snow a lot. This is actually gonna be our last show before Thanksgiving because we are off next week. So in the spirit of that for each of you, what is your favorite dish, your favorite food at Thanksgiving? 
For me, it's always been, always been the turkey. My family always, they deep fry turkey. It's always the best. I always loved it as a kid, it hasn't changed now. I feel like that's a rare answer. I feel like people are always going for the side dishes. Oh, oh absolutely. No, main dish. No, what's wrong with you? Green bean and corn casserole. Those are my favorite. Nice. And then finally, you know, as we take a retrospective this week on the regular season and headed to the playoffs, in each of your opinions, is there a funniest moment from the team this season? It could be practice, could be a game, anything that sticks out. Oh, man. <laughs> there's so many. That there's, like, there's nothing. I don't think I can pinpoint anything. There's a lot of different stories and a, so many different things that I want to remember as best as I can. Just that happened this year. That's going to continue to happen. But... I don't know. There's a lot of guys on this team who are funny, a lot of funny things that, that has happened. So it's, uh, it's tough to pinpoint just one. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, I, it's almost a daily basis where just something <laughs> like odd or, or really, really funny happens. So. If you had to pick a player who is most frequently responsible for these things, <laughs> who's, who seems to always be involved in the humor? Cole Griffin. <sighs> he, is, he is just a very, very different, but in a good way, person. Yeah. Man, I don't know, Cole's definitely one of those guys. A few other guys that always come, D'Lo Hardy is one of those guys who we're, we're close to each other. We've been friends, we were, went to high school together, so I've known him for a while, but our lockers are close to each other. Never, never fails to make me laugh or smile when I come in. He's just a, he's just a goofy kid. And there's a lot of dudes around that around like our locker room area who are also like that, so, but D'Lo's one of the guys that kind of sticks out to me. Well, guys, you know, I hope there's plenty of more, you know, fun, happy memories to be made here along the way the rest of the season. Carnegie Mellon on Saturday, we go from there. Ben, Ethan, thanks for coming back on the Red Zone. Thanks, yeah, thanks for, having for having us. us. How exactly does someone become a competitive bowler? A quick canvas of the North Central women's bowling team reveals that there isn't a straight answer to that question. Senior Kelly Highway really enjoyed bowling, but the idea of a competitive team wasn't an opportunity she had before college. At North Central was like my first time like being on a team and actually like getting to compete. And um, I really liked it, you know, just being able to make new friends and travel and get to see places like I haven't been before and just compete against like some of the best teams across the country. Um, it's a big challenge, but it's something that all of us, I think, really enjoy. Others converted from other sports, like Caitlin Freund, who discovered bowling and found that she enjoyed it more than swimming, the sport to which she had dedicated her childhood. I think it was just like, it was just more fun. Like swimming always felt like work. Like I was good at it, I was successful at it, but it going to practice every day was wearing me down and it just didn't have that fun feel. And then in high school, when I started bowling, it was like, it was fun, I was good at it, and so it kind of just felt like the right fit. And then there are some, like sophomore and leading scorer this season, Jessica Ramirez, who seem like they were born to bowl. Um, I've bowled pretty much all my life. And a big thing for me was my parents used to do leagues and my sister actually got me into it as well. This is just the fifth year for the bowling program at North Central. So the sport is still very much new to the school and was likewise for their unlikely coach. Jason Sanborn was a wrestler at North Central and is hoping to bring that program's pedigree of success to his and the athletic department's latest venture. Getting into the sport and coaching, you start to learn there is so much more to the sport of bowling than just you know rolling the pit, rolling the, the ball down the lanes trying to knock down ten pins. Um, so it's it's been awesome to learn a new sport, um, to be able to kind of immerse myself into a new sport and and try to get better. I'm also a, just a natural competitor um, so I wanted to you know the opportunity to get back into coaching leading a program um, and and having a new adventure almost yeah the team had its early growing pains including often during its inaugural season only being able to field four bowlers in a competition that required five but the roster has grown to nine and for seniors like highway who has been around for most of the team's existence that's huge progress. Um, I think that so far, like this year, has been one of our best years. Just having a bigger number and being able to kind of sub in and out um, when we need to has been a huge asset. And just having that bigger, you know, team to cheer and you know pick people up when they need it has been has been really great. Beyond growing as a team, every practice like this one is an opportunity to get better 
with bowlers working on details that the casual weekend bowling alley attendee might never think to consider. I think it's important to know that not only is it a physical sport, it's a big mental sport. There's so many things that, or aspects I should say, that play into what you're doing on the lanes, like ball changes, where you play, how you play, um, the line you're throwing, who threw on that lane before you. So many things play into um, your line and where you want to play in the oil pattern. That's just a huge thing just to kind of have your mental game and be able to figure out where you want to play. The team recently completed its fall schedule with a spring slate set to begin in January. They're hoping to use the time to refocus on the basic steps of team building and the refining of individual skills to help continue the program's slow but steady growth. So far this season, I think that we've definitely figured out how to work together as a team. The first tournament, I feel like was kind of rough. We were trying to figure out um, where the freshmen fit in, uh, where our transfer fit in, and I think as the season's gone on, we've really figured out how to work together as a team, how to pick each other up, which is a really important part of bowling. It's actually one of the most successful fall seasons that our program has had. I know sometimes our record might not show, but when you're competing against the best of the best in the country week in and week out, you know, it, it can carry some of those difficulties when you're putting, you know, trying to look at wins and losses. Just coming together and improving so much over the last couple of weeks has been wonderful. It's time for this week's Red Zone Play of the Game. This reverse handoff to sophomore wide receiver D'Angelo Hardy initially looked like a complete disaster, and yet, somehow, Hardy weaved his way through the entire North Park defense to find his way to the end zone for his first rushing touchdown and 10th total TD of the season. Take another look at just all of the missed tackles on this play, as the Vikings missed their chances to take down Hardy, who, much like the Cardinals in this 84-6 victory, had no problem navigating the North Park defenders and putting more points on the board. With no shortage of choices, Hardy's run still stuck out as this week's Red Zone Play of the Game. That will do it for this week's edition of the Red Zone. Thanks as always to Coach Jeff Thorne and to Ethan and Ben. Congratulations to them on both their individual and team honors, and good luck this weekend against the Tartans. Thanks as well to North Central Women's Bowling, particularly Coach Jacob Sanborn and Jessica, Caitlin, and Kelly. They're on a break right now, but will be back in action in the new year. North Central against Carnegie Mellon in the first round of the NCAA Division III Football Championship We'll be live here on NCTV 17, as well as NCTV17.com and NorthCentralCardinals.com this Saturday. Kickoff is at noon central, and we'll be live with pregame buildup starting at 1145. Also, a programming note, due to Thanksgiving, we will not have a new episode of The Red Zone for you next week. So the next time you'll see me on this set, hopefully we're looking ahead to the Cardinals football team playing in the quarterfinals. Thanks for watching this 10th edition of the Red Zone this season. Hopefully there are many more episodes to come, but for now, I'm Alex Campbell, and thanks for watching.